All right, what's up, y'all? So it's been about two months since I put up a video, and uh, so in my kind of hiatus, I guess we can say, I've just been extremely busy um, with all the COVID stuff going on. They have actually uh, officially moved me to working from home, uh, which I've already been kind of working from home since March. But uh, things have kind of picked up, just getting busy again. So I just haven't had the ambition to really get out recording, and then I have to be on the computer even longer than what I already am, and uh, try to do all the video editing and stuff. I did uh, kind of have a boo-boo um, about a month ago. Um, I was spraying ammonium sulfate, potassium nitrate, and uh, typically it rains the night after I apply, or the morning of, um, but that didn't happen, and so I went a couple days without any water on it, and I did get a little bit of fertilizer burn, uh, but the things are, looks like they've pretty much recovered. I've had about two or three mows in there since then. Um, so things are looking pretty good. So now things are starting to cool down. It's, uh, it says it's about 43 out right now. So uh, things have really cooled down here. Um, kind of uh, a little bit sooner than I had anticipated. Last year when um, late September, early October hit, it was just starting to cool down to where it was about 70, 75 out. And uh, so last year I'd actually held off on aerating and overseeding until the beginning of October, just so I'm not fighting the uh, the heat and you know trying to water in 90 degree temps and all that stuff where you have uh, fresh grass seed down. So that was kind of a pain. So I waited and it seemed to work a lot better. Um, this time it uh, it cooled off a lot quicker than I anticipated. And so I haven't even aerated and overseeded yet. And um, I could throw it down now. Uh, since the temps are still, you know, high temps are getting up to about 60, 65, so I'm still over that 55 degree temp, I believe. But I've been extremely busy in the back. As you can see there's some uh, dirt piles around here. I'll show you what I'm working on. All right, so in some other videos I had mentioned we were wanting to put a privacy fence in. So I've already ran the line. That's pretty much the property line. The other fence is about six inches in from the property line. So I've got the line set and the I've dug a few of these holes out and managed to get down to frost depth, which here is 36 inches. And when I've gotten those down to the 36 inches, I do have these sonar tubes and I've been filling those in. Thirty six inches all the way down. So this was a bit of a, a process even just to get these three holes dug. Uh rented a two man auger over the weekend and thought, oh I can just tear these out pretty quick, no big deal. Yeah, that didn't go as planned. So as you can see through here there's I've got this tree here. And there was other bushes and stuff throughout that mulch bed over here. So, hit rocks. I hit roots. Um, the clay was uh, pretty compacted, so the two-man auger wasn't even uh, getting in through the clay. And when it would eventually catch, it would throw one of us into the fence. So we didn't want to um, kind of mess around with it anymore. It was actually almost broke my wife's finger where it uh, threw her hand into the uh, fence. So we kinda kinda quit on it, dug out the rest we could. And so the rest of it, we uh, pretty much couldn't get anywhere else with it. We were, we were absolutely dead by the time we got anywhere um, past the three holes. So uh, we kinda just kinda called it quits and um, got a feeling that you know I, I can't do this by myself. Um, I have a, a former neighbor who did my, uh, my split rail he didn't sound too interested in wanting to do the vinyl fence, um, so I'm doing a, a vinyl PVC uh, white privacy fence, if I didn't mention that before. So, putting that through here, and I'm going to have to get some help. So, there's a, a person who did my father-in-law's fence, um, so called him up and going to have him come out and help uh, finish this thing out. And um, so hopefully he can go through and dig these out a lot easier than I can because it's being an IT guy, I'm not cut out for this. So I'm going to have someone else kind of help dig them out. And he 
might have some other tips and tricks on how to uh, dig this stuff out and hopefully we can get this finished out today. All right, so day two of the fence install. So you can see behind me, made a little bit of progress. So we ended up getting about five panels put in yesterday. Flip around so I can give you a close up here. All right, there we go. So I've pretty much got to go. Looks like I've got another three panels going down to get in. Still got to dig those holes out. And there is a first hole that I hadn't dug out yet. So we'll end up doing this panel here. Might do this one probably first this morning once we dig it out. So there's different methods in doing this. And I was kind of doing stuff based on YouTube videos when I was kind of planning this out. So I can see I've got these tubes in there. And down in there is actually some dry set concrete. So I did the uh, the quick set concrete. Now, when I started on this whole project, pretty worn out. So if I said this, I'm going to say it again. Me and my wife ran into two. And the uh, the first panel here was the uh, the most difficult one. It didn't want to rack properly, and the uh, pieces. It's a really good. Uh, fence apparently the the vinyl is very thick it is a um i don't know wood bridge something rather um but i got it through home depot and uh, i actually got a decent deal on it so i don't know if it's a normal thing or not but if you have a larger project like this if you sign up for that pro x um through the, the professional counter you know that's further down at home depot if you sign up for that you actually get a little bit more of a discount they get rid of those those vendor fees and um and you actually get the products a little bit quicker just saying so i end up getting almost like six hundred dollars off of this fence plus i got it all at the same time versus if i was trying to order it off the website is when some of the parts weren't going to show up until like october so it was kind of a kind of a sweet deal that uh they helped me out with so anyway guy came out helped me get this stuff set up and fought with this one once we get this one eventually kind of set up, the rest of them kind of start going pretty easy. The uh, the posts are five by fives because that was the only ones that I could find that were um, nine feet tall. I wanted to go three feet deep down the frost depth and then have enough room for maybe like the cap on top, stuff like that. So dug it down, then realized that we have to kind of lift it back up a little bit. So we're sitting at about 32 inches um, with the, uh, put a little bit of dirt back into it. Some of the videos recommend putting gravel on the bottom. The guy that I'm working with has been doing fencing for, I don't know, I think he said like 35, 40 years, something like that. Didn't believe in the gravel. So uh, I've got a bunch of gravel that I'm gonna actually take back and uh, get some other concrete because I ran out of concrete. But got the tubes in there, dry set it instead of wet mixing the concrete. And there's a little bit of a tip to this. So if you're using the fast setting concrete, it makes it a little bit more difficult to work with on these fences because if you need to adjust these things and you start uh, setting the concrete wet mixing and putting in there and then putting the posts in there if you need to fine tune these posts kind of you know, tweak it a little bit one way or the other then you won't be able to do it so the uh the guy i'm working with he prefers the other um concrete that that takes a little bit longer to set so that way as you kind of set all these up and they're put in there wet you can still fine tune these posts and kind of tweak them how you need to before they finally set. So what we ended up doing, we worked around with it because I already had a bunch of the quick creep. Uh, we dry mixed it to kind of dry set these posts. Um, so those are all, you know, have two bags of uh, the fast setting concrete in there. Didn't wet them yet. And um, so once we get the rest of these panels set, the uh, I've got four more, well, three more panels that I have to set, I believe. Yeah, so I've got four posts, so three panels. And once I get those in there and we'll make sure everything is good, then we'll spray some water in there, get the concrete setting, and then fill the top of it with dirt. So <clears throat> another tip I'd learned. So these tubes are 
about three feet deep, 36 inches, and the frost depth. And, it's, and some of the videos I've seen, they fill the concrete all the way up to the top. Apparently you don't have to do that. So we filled it up about two thirds of the way. So we have uh, about 100 pounds of concrete in each post. So it's still plenty. And then it also gives me enough room to kind of backfill that tube back up with the, uh, the soil. And then that'll allow to, if you know, we're putting the grass seed and stuff back on there, the grass will be able to grow a little bit better around these, around these posts. So that's where we're at. So I will touch base when I get the other four in and show you the final product. It's finally done. So the guy just left a little bit ago. We got the uh, concrete watered in, backfilled the, uh, the tubes a little bit. But we got all the way down, I'll show you. All the way down. Still got some dirt, we gotta backfill, get rid of that, but all the way down, had the racket. That's part of the reason why I got a privacy fence, got all these kids yelling. So this is racked. Hey, see as it comes down, it just naturally glides down. Goes along right there with the uh, the ground. It's natural curve. Instead of trying to do, there's another method it's called stair stepping. And the problem with stair stepping is that I'm trying to get away from the kids screaming. So the benefits of of doing it racking versus stair stepping is when you do that racking, you have you can kind of flow with that that ground a little bit as opposed to stair stepping. You come out so if your ground comes down like this and you stair step your fence posts kind of drop down but your fence slats and the actual part of it is straight and so as you have that bow to the ground you have that fence that goes straight over so on this side you would have a pretty big gap now if you have a small dog or something or you're worried about maybe if you have a kid that would actually crawl underneath the fence then it'd be a little bit of an issue with me having the dog, I was worried about her maybe crawling underneath it while there is what's left of a split rail fence behind me um, that wasn't maintained or anything. So there is one there, but I did not want to rely on that. So relied on doing the, the racking method instead and looks a lot better uh, in my opinion. So everything is done. Now on these holes where the posts are, I have, um, most of the way filled up with dirt. We watered it, get the concrete set. I uh, used mostly the fast setting concrete. So it should be pretty good now. But what I'm gonna do is every day, I'll add more of this clay dirt back into the sono tubes, fill it up the rest of the way, water it, let that settle. And then as that kind of settles in, then I'll next day I'll add more of the soil in there until everything's nice and packed in. And these fence posts should not move anywhere. So, I'm very happy with it. All right, while editing, I realized something. So, something I wanna point out. These posts that I got, these five by fives, these were blank posts. I originally had some brackets that were meant to hold this in place. And so, that's why these were blanks, cause I was gonna have some brackets holding this. But, these rails are about six inches tall and the brackets were not meant to hold this type of rail. So as you can see, we actually cut all of these rails out so they would fit into the post. We did that across all of them. You can see a little bit of a cut there. So all these were all slotted into the post. All right, and so we did that all the way down. So all 10 posts through here were notched out. We just used a, uh, a multi-tool, so it cut right through it. It wasn't difficult or anything. So we just used a multi-tool. If you've never seen it, it's the one that has the, the blade that's about yay long and about, about yay wide, has teeth on it. It pretty much cuts through anything, vinyl, wood, metal, fingers if you're not careful and so we just kind of templated them out cut them all out they fit right in worked really well and while I'm editing this uh, you can see 
all the dirt is filled back in. All this dirt is gone. It did mess up my grass through here. So reseeding. And I've got some little uh, spotlights in between each panel all the way down. And so at night, it kind of gives a little bit of a, uh, a light coming up on the uh, on each panel. Looks pretty cool. The ones back here don't get as much light, so they don't last very long. Kind of got the uh, my compost bin down here to um, try to keep the kids from going down there. And while there's no kids out here screaming right now, I will show you this spot. So I had to do a little bit of uh, fabrication to uh, make this part work. Let me get back here. All right. So as I got the the tenth um, piece down here, so you can see it's racked down with the uh, the ground here. I end up with a about a three and a half foot section here that I needed an extra panel for. Luckily, the guy that was helping me out, he had an extra panel, and yeah, this doesn't exactly match, but looking where I'm at, back behind an old shed here. Nobody's going to come back here. Nobody's going to see it. I don't really care. So at least he hooked me up. Gave me some extra pieces. So use the multi-tool. Cut this down because this was an 8 foot long section. Ended up cutting this one down a little bit as well. Multi-tool just cuts right through it. Very easy. And I am I got to get an extra post cap. I'm down one. So as you can see here huge stump. Bunch of roots through here. So trying to dig out to put a, uh, a post three foot in just wasn't going to happen. This one was a little bit difficult and actually banging around we end up breaking or splitting a little bit of that. So it's kind of fixed. So as it gets through stuff through here, really won't see that. But we were going to be fighting with this. Didn't want to fight with it. So we did a little bit of uh, fabricating. So I got two by four. And there's another two by four coming this way so it kind of made an L shape and then I cut this out and so use the multi-tool just kind of notched out spot for the two by four slid over it and then ran a couple screws into it so now it's not going anywhere because it's tied to this two by four and it kept me from having to dig into the ground so then we ran that in there it's all set post caps are all on there all the way down now one more tip i'll give if you do this type of fence these rails slide in on each side so before you put your post caps in get a, a like a two inch screw and through the top screw into those rails that way if anything picks up and starts to pull on these rails It'll keep these rails from coming out. So do that on each side. So on top of each one. So this won't move either way. Kind of holds it in place. Because if these things pop out. Then these slats are all going to kind of come up. And out of place. And it's hard to get them all back in place. So another little tip there for you. I like it. I'm happy. The wife's happy. And as the saying goes. Happy wife. You don't get knifed. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.